Hey, welcome back, everybody. Happy Sunday. Hopefully, we're having an all right into the week out there. And uh, we do have a couple things to talk about today, including kind of what a mess the forecast was in the tropics as, uh, you know, kind of what is now Hurricane Oscar went under the radar pretty significantly. Uh, fortunately, not a strong hurricane, kind of a low grade category one, and also very small hurricane in size. But, um, uh, still, uh, you know, never good to have a forecast miss that badly, and I'll be the first to admit that uh, it was missed very badly, not only by myself, but uh, by just about everybody, I would say, uh, including uh, all of our weather models. So uh, we'll definitely talk a little bit about that today. The good news, though, is the forecast doesn't really change in terms of who's going to get the impacts. Uh, that has stayed the same with that storm system, uh, just the intensity of it went up considerably compared to what was um, originally expected. Now, other than that, um, again, over the lower 48, things remain pretty quiet, but we do have another shot of cold air for some of us going into this week ahead. Uh, and then we'll talk about the long range as well and kind of break down what I'm seeing in that 10 day range. Alrighty. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so like the video, comment, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Probably won't have a super long video today, uh, because I do have a lot, uh, going on and, uh, luckily we're in a little bit of a lull anyway, but, uh, starting with the tropics, uh, this is hurricane Oscar and talk about a tiny storm. I mean, this thing is only about the size of Hispaniola. Uh, so if you were to put this over the United States, it would look even smaller than it already does. Uh, almost uh, hurricane Andrew size, if you will, although luckily not nearly as strong as hurricane Andrew. Now, this morning on satellite imagery, uh, definitely a healthy looking system. All things considered, you can see kind of this uh, fanning out of the upper level winds. Uh, you can see this uh, deep convection in the center of the storm. But luckily, uh, we do not have an eye clearing out. We do not have uh, anything that would indicate that this is a major hurricane, but still a you know strong category one storm with winds around 80 miles an hour and a pressure sitting down and around um, uh, 987 or 988 millibars. So definitely, definitely a hurricane. Um, but, uh, again, much stronger than we originally thought at one point, which was nothing. So, uh, latest track from the national hurricane center. This is now expected to move into Cuba and make landfall, uh, sometime later this afternoon here, uh, kind of between, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly, uh, Barcoa and Moa, <laughs> maybe that's how, uh, Barcoa, I think, uh, might be how you say that. Also, I'm really tired because I just woke up, so that's not helping. Uh, but either way, kind of to the north and to the northeast of Guantanamo uh, is where that landfall is expected and then expected to kind of meander through extreme south uh, eastern Cuba here before getting back over the open waters of the Atlantic sometime overnight Monday into Tuesday uh, and then dying out over the Bahamas. So uh, again, the, still no fork, or excuse me, still no impacts expected in the United States, no impacts expected in Nassau, Freeport, Miami. Uh, this is again going to just kind of be down here through the southern islands of the Bahamas and into uh, the extreme southeastern coastline of uh, Cuba. All right, timing it out for you just a little bit here just to kind of show you what is on the horizon with the storm. Uh, this is the latest GFS model, and uh, again, just kind of what I just showed you is what is expected. A little bit more strengthening is possible this afternoon before landfall uh, again sometime this evening, um, and then obviously getting ripped apart pretty quickly by that terrain interaction over Cuba uh, and dissipating and then just kind of being left uh, with some leftover rain. Uh, and then this could try to reform into a low pressure over the Atlantic, but at that point, it'll be dealing with some pretty harsh upper level winds. Uh, so not expecting any sort of uh, extreme restrengthening. Now, obviously we said that earlier in the week and uh, here we are, um, but again, feeling pretty confident that this will not re-strengthen into a big time storm once again over the Bahamas as it gets ripped apart by some uh, wind shear and then kind of phases with another system to form a mid-latitude cyclone. So uh, that is the future of Oscar. Uh, and uh, again, qu quite, the, quite the surprise to say the least in the tropics. Uh, potential impacts, again, really rain is the only thing and not even all that much, all things considered, maybe two, uh, excuse me, four to six inches in uh, the highest areas here through southeastern Cuba. Uh, but most of us only getting about two to four inches or about 50 to 100 millimeters of rainfall here uh, through the Turks and Caicos. Uh, and then again, back into surrounding areas. So that is the latest uh, on the tropics. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on elsewhere in the country. Uh, and we will just start with kind of a zoomed out view over the lower 48. Now, currently, uh, again, things things are quite boring. We're in quite the lull here. We do have, again, this is Oscar in the bottom of your screen. Uh, not hard to find with that area of convection. We have just this massive area of high pressure over the eastern half of the country. 
uh, that has prevented really any active weather of any sort uh, working its way into this part of the country for uh, really the past week or so and will continue that way. In fact, I'm still not seeing any rain on the horizon kind of in this circled area uh, potentially for the next 10 days. So it is definitely becoming a concern how quiet the weather is uh, for those drought concerns and wildfire concerns through portions of the east. Now, uh, we do have another ridge out west as well, and kind of along that ridge, we are seeing some cloud cover up here into the northern tier of the country, specifically the Pacific Northwest up into Montana, uh, seeing some of that cloud cover. But the bigger story is what's caught up under that ridge, and that is this storm system that has brought uh, plenty of severe weather and mountain snowfall uh, over the past couple of days as it's kind of gotten stuck over the four corners. Uh, the good news for you folks who are tired of dealing with it out that way is it will finally get kind of shoved on out of here overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, but again, we do have to get through today and those impacts uh, that it could bring this afternoon and evening before we are out of the woods. All right, um, watches, warnings, advisories, radar imagery will start in the east. Yeah, not, not a lot happening. Uh, a couple of frost advisories in a couple places, uh, a couple of, uh, special weather statements, probably for some fog in some places. Um, but uh, really the only rain east of the Mississippi is up into uh, portions of eastern Canada, seeing some rain work on through uh, some of these areas and then also um, seeing uh, what was I going to show a couple showers down here off the coast of Florida as again we're getting some of that uh, cold air to wrap around and go over the Gulf Stream and that is creating some instability and a couple of showers but um, uh, again not really anything to write home about. All right, the real active weather again out west, specifically the four corners where we are still seeing very heavy mountain snow. I mean, these mountains of Colorado down here, uh, I think it's the San Jose mountain chain, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but either way, this section right here into southwestern Colorado, I mean, you folks have gotten absolutely blasted with heavy snowfall in those higher terrains over the past couple of days. Uh, places seeing feet of snow uh, instead of inches out of this storm system. Also, we've had that severe weather threat down into, into New Mexico. Uh, also, a flooding threat has been brought uh, into that area. Uh, so we do have that flood watch up. We've had uh, multiple impressive supercells, including a couple tornadoes over the past couple of days. Uh, and today will kind of probably be the peak of it or the final show, if you will, at least here into New Mexico uh, before we finally begin to clear on out. Uh, and then out into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, also, again, just seeing some showers up here through this part of the country. All right, so that's severe weather forecast this afternoon. We do have a slight risk up here for portions of eastern New Mexico, but really the entire eastern half of the state under a severe weather threat. That does include even the extreme western panhandle of Oklahoma, uh, Texas, and then extreme southeastern uh, portions of Colorado. Uh, could potentially see a couple strong storms this afternoon as well. So definitely an active day today. Uh, and then tomorrow we will also have a small severe weather threat. But as you can tell, it's moving uh, as that storm finally kicks on out of here into portions of uh, central Kansas, into uh, west central Oklahoma, uh, and then uh, extreme uh, northeastern portions of the Texas Panhandle as well under that marginal risk for severe weather for your Monday. All right, let's time this out a little bit for you here, uh, and uh, we'll move this ahead. So this afternoon, again, you'll kind of notice uh, we've got some showers up into the Pacific Northwest, uh, as we do have a little bit of uh, kind of a front swinging on through that area. Uh, but the big weather continuing to remain into the four corners. And you know what? Let me see if I can actually zoom this in a little bit more for us. Uh, in fact, I know I can. Let me go ahead and do it for you. Uh, you'll notice, again, uh, here we go. We've got some of those showers and storms popping up. And uh, you'll notice a couple of these cells trying to become quite strong to severe uh, into our uh, evening hours here. Plenty of supercells kind of clustering in. So again, I would not be surprised to see a couple tornadoes, some strong straight line winds, some large hail, and then obviously that continuation of mountain snow into southwest uh, Colorado. Uh, this continues into the evening hours. Those strong storms roll on through and then kind of congeal and die out a little bit during the overnight. By the time we're waking up uh, tomorrow morning for our um, Monday for the start of the week, we've got a couple of showers moving through that marginal risk that we do have in place for tomorrow. Uh, and these storms could try to re-strengthen in the afternoon in that region, and that's why we have that marginal risk in place. You'll notice that here, uh, again, even through southern Nebraska into kind of Kansas and into uh, portions of Oklahoma and Texas there, a couple of these storms trying to become strong to severe as they tap into some afternoon instability. Uh, but uh, what I would consider to be a very conditional threat for tomorrow uh, tomorrow's severe weather. So not expecting a big outbreak or anything like that, 
uh, but could see again a couple strong storms uh, that do cause problems for somebody. All right, uh, let me go ahead and zoom back out again out here just to show you the entire West. Uh, and I know we zoomed in on that threat specifically, but uh, this won't take long to do anyway. Uh, again, let me back this up for you. All right, so here we go. This is this afternoon. Again, those showers working through the Pacific Northwest. Uh, those continue to work on through even portions of Idaho and Montana by our overnight Sunday here into Monday and Monday afternoon. Uh, and then again, just kind of continue to work on through that region through the next couple of days. So just figured I'd go ahead and add that in there as well for you folks. All right, um, do, 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 the East Coast. Um, again, really, really not much happening out here. So I will go ahead and breeze on through this as well because uh, you know it's uh, not, not gonna take a lot to talk about. So uh, here we go. High pressure really is the main theme locked over much of the Eastern half of the country, just uh, bringing beautiful fall-like weather. Really couldn't ask for nicer conditions through uh, this area and it will stay nice really through the foreseeable future. So this is all this afternoon uh, outside of the state of Florida, no rain. And again, in Florida, only scattered uh, at times, especially through central Florida. Um, but then after that, uh, again, not much. There's our little storm system out west. Again, kind of uh, works through those areas that we talked about. And by the time we get to overnight Monday into Tuesday, uh, that storm system begins to die out here and kind of lose some of that upper level support. But could see a couple showers through even Iowa and Missouri by uh, Monday evening and into our Tuesday. Uh, but elsewhere, again, things remain calm. Uh, Temperature-wise, this afternoon uh, again, it's going to be it's going to be quite nice. It's kind of uh, one of those patterns where it's sweaters in the morning, t-shirts in the afternoon for just about everyone here. Uh, these are your high temperatures, uh, upper 70s for many folks, um, uh, and even getting into the upper 60s and lower 70s through the Ohio River Valley into uh, the Mid Atlantic and even portions of the I-95 corridor. All right, overnight temperatures and uh, kind of what you're going to see to start your week uh, tomorrow. Uh, again, lows back down into the lower 40s for most of us. So again, another chilly morning. And then tomorrow afternoon will again be a warm afternoon with temperatures up into the 70s, uh, even cracking the 80s for some of us here into the deep south and into the southern plains. Uh, so again, just kind of this overall warming trend as we start the work week. All right, uh, so on the horizon here, what's coming on down the pipeline? Well, we are watching for... Uh, another storm system here, and uh, it's all going to start kind of going into Tuesday and Wednesday. So you'll notice another trough showing up here on our map, uh, kind of working through Canada and even clipping portions of the uh, northern Great Plains there through the Dakotas. But this uh, kind of uh, trough or frontal system will really begin to impact us going later into the week. You'll notice this really dives, uh, or I guess really begins to clip part of the country excuse me, uh, through portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then even into the UP of Michigan, getting in on that colder air uh, and uh, continues even into the Northeast and really, I mean, gets pretty far south. This is next Thursday morning or this coming Thursday morning, I guess. Uh, and you'll notice again, this block of cold air really getting uh, stationed pretty far east, becoming neutrally tilted, meaning uh, that uh, the storm system associated with this trough, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, will likely continue to strengthen um, and yeah, I mean, it's going to bring some nice cool air. It's going to bring another shot of chilly air. Uh, but then after that, you'll notice another big time ridge builds in for the seven to 10 day. And then in that 10 day time frame, uh, time frame rather, not time frame, uh, we are watching for the potential of another big trough to dump out West, uh, here towards the Halloween time frame, And that could bring another storm system that could impact, uh, more people on a wider scale here. Uh, we kind of talked about that a couple of videos ago, and that same process has uh, continued here. I do think by the end of October, uh, we will see a more uh, notable storm system kind of begin across the country. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this on radar, uh, and uh, here we go. This is Tuesday afternoon. Here's our trough, and here is our associated storm system with that trough. Now, for us in the United States, this storm system is quite far north up into Canada, so uh, all we're going to get out of it are probably some scattered showers and or snow showers, depending on where you're at. Uh, here on the southern side, here's that cold front. I'll go ahead and draw it out for you. Uh, or let me kind of draw it a little bit better. This is really probably the placement of that front. Um, you'll notice, uh, again, kind of beginning to swing on through here. We are getting some showers along that front here uh, through northern Minnesota into the UP of Michigan on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, that continues to swing on through those regions by uh, overnight Tuesday and Wednesday. That cold air beginning to advect in could bring some lake effect precipitation definitely here 
uh, I think, uh, into some of these regions of uh, northern Michigan uh, and even the, kind of really the entire state, the UP and kind of the mitten itself, uh, as I've heard it referred to. Um, so again, watching for lake effect precipitation out of that. Uh, at the same time, uh, those showers begin to work on through the northeast as that front swings on through Wednesday into Thursday. And then that cold air begins to set up shop here uh, by Thursday afternoon. And once again, could see some northwest higher elevation uh, snowflakes out of this, maybe even some lake effect precipitation out of this uh, for the end of the work week. Uh, but uh, what we're also going to see is another high pressure funnel in behind it. And again, keep things calm here in the east uh, and uh, really just uh, continue that pattern of no rainfall uh, and we'll move this even out to uh, about seven to 10 days here. Again, nothing really showing up, maybe in that seven, eight, nine day time frame, uh, another kind of storm system, maybe riding south of this cold air to the north. Uh, we'll watch that, but that's about a week or so from now. Uh, and even then doesn't look overly impressive in the rainfall department uh, and doesn't really get it much further south than uh, the northeast. So again, we'll watch that. Uh, but then you'll see in the long range, I will mention this about 10 days from now, here's another storm system, a more potent looking storm system uh, beginning to form here as we get that big time trough to dump out west. So uh, my eyes are on that in the long range. I do think again, about 10 days or so from now, we will see uh, a more powerful system to watch and uh, probably give us more to talk about. All right, temperatures. Well, uh, it's going to be a warming trend now until that trough kind of works on through. So this is tomorrow afternoon. Again, just about everyone east of the Rockies getting in on above average temperatures. That continues into Tuesday afternoon. Uh, again, well above average temperatures. It's really going to start to feel quite nice out there in the afternoon. Uh, it's not even really going to be all that chilly in the afternoons, uh, but that will change again as our trough swings on through. You'll notice that blue working back in. This is Thursday morning. Uh, back to below average to near average temperatures here into the Ohio River Valley, up through the Great Lakes and into the Northeast. Uh, and that continues here into our Friday morning, uh, where many of us here into the East, even as far south as Tennessee, the Carolinas, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, could once again get in on some cooler air uh, to kind of make those mornings even a little cooler than they already are uh, and continue that trend into the weekend before, again, another ridge in the seven to 10 day time frame. Uh, kind of load. But then, like I mentioned, 10 days out, you'll notice this clash of air masses, very cold air out west, very warm air in the east. That tells me we're probably going to get a pretty strong storm in between. Uh, and this one could bring some severe weather. I would be definitely uh, monitoring the potential for that into the plains. Also, potentially, maybe some snowfall uh, somewhere to the north of that. It is getting late enough in the season that these mid-latitude cyclones uh, are more likely to bring snow outside of the higher elevations. All right, so total rainfall now through the next 10 days. Um, I mean, you'll notice really nothing happening. I mean, it's just, it just it's quite boring here through the east. Uh, now, you are noticing this little bump up in precipitation down near Louisiana, and actually, I'm not entirely sure what that is from, so let's check here. Uh, it looks like about 10 days from now, the European maybe pulls up a little bit of some moisture from the Gulf. Um, so again, that, that's 10 days from now. So even that though is not, uh, not something that I would, uh, put uh, the mortgage on by any means. Um, but, uh, again, just pretty boring over the next 10 days rainfall wise. One more thing that we can take a look at is snowfall, uh, which I did not pull up. And again, I don't think a lot over the next, um, kind of, again, the same time frame. I'm not expecting a lot, but after that, maybe, uh, so GFS snowfall through the next 10 days or so. Uh, again, you will notice we are seeing some totals into the Northeast due to some of that uh, back in Northwest flow and lake effect snow event. Same story up here into Northern uh, Michigan, uh, likely from that front moving through next week. Um, that's funny, it's even showing some snowfall down here, which is not gonna happen. So you folks in Tennessee that see this random uh, blurb of snowfall, don't, uh, don't mind that any business. Um, in fact, I don't even know why, why it would show that, but uh, either way. Uh, there's that. And then as we go further out into time, this is what I really wanted to show you. Once we get that 10 to 15 day time frame, uh, like I mentioned, a storm system possible in the plains, I do think this has the potential for uh, some northern plains snowfall outside of the Rockies. Uh, and you will see that showing up on the ensembles here well out into the long range. But um, uh, again, just uh, something to monitor there and uh, that we will keep you updated on. But still plenty of time till we get there. It's uh, still, again, multiple uh, multiple days away. In fact, really a week plus away. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's all I got for you here on this uh, Sunday. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Uh, with that said, though, have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.